Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Green Match Fund 2024 webinar. Uh, we're really glad that you are able to join us today. Um, we're just going to give it a minute or two to give people a chance to join, and then we will get started. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the Green Match Fund 2024 uh, webinar. We're just going to give it a minute or two um, just to give people a chance to join and then we will get underway. Great, I think we can get started. Uh, welcome everyone to the Green Match Fund 2024 webinar. Um, my name is Sahil Shah, I'm the Key Partnerships Manager at The Big Give, and uh, on the call today is my colleague uh, Bethany Duxbury-Campbell, who is our Marketing Comms Manager. Uh, we are hosting this webinar just to give you an introduction to the Green Match Fund for next year. Um, I just have a bit of housekeeping before we get started. Um, so I just want to firstly say that um, if you have uh, or if you want to network with anyone, introduce yourselves or anything like that, please use the chat uh, function at the bottom of your Zoom panel. Uh, please make sure your chat reply is set to everyone so everyone can see what you're saying. Um, as mentioned, you can introduce yourselves to anyone else or any of the other attendees here um, or also share any ideas um, during the webinar. Also, if you have any tech issues, please put them in the chat function as well, and we can pick them up there. Um, please type your questions for you have for the Q and A portion of the webinar in the Q and A box at the bottom of your web uh, of your Zoom panel. Um, that's where we'll pick up the questions. Please try to avoid putting them in the chat function, just because we um, sometimes they get lost. Um, we will also try and let people speak um, in the Q&A portion. So if you do want to speak directly to us, please try and use the um, raise hand button and we'll try and unmute you and we'll see how that works out. Um, there is closed captioning on this webinar um, at the bottom. If you click on the more button, there should be then an option for um, you to turn on captions if you need them. Um, as ever, we are recording the webinar and it will be available to watch on our YouTube channel after, after the session is over. So if you want to rewatch it or share it with colleagues, you're more than welcome to. And if you have any questions after the webinar ends, um, you can contact us at hello at biggive.org and we'll be really happy to answer any questions that you may have. So yeah, in this session, we're just gonna give a really brief background into the Big Give and the Green Match Fund, and then we'll go through the application process um, for next year's campaign because it has slightly changed um, from previous years. Uh, we'll have a bit of uh, overview of what are the uh, sort of benefits for you to take part in the campaign, and lastly, how you can get involved. So to date, uh, the Big Give has raised £247 million for charities uh, since 20, uh, 2008. And we have done this through running match funding campaigns. That is our USP. We run match funding campaigns. We prov provide match funds for charities. So as well as giving you access uh, to um, our match funding campaigns and access to those match funds, our campaigns help charities showcase your work, work to supporters and philanthropists. Um, we All of our campaigns are digital fundraising campaigns, so we help you enable you to um, take online donations. And through our campaigns, we have seen that charities have been able to increase their online vis uh, visibility to new supporters. And through taking part in our campaigns, we hope that charities can increase your resilience profile and skills overall in the digital fundraising area. So what is a Green Match Fund? The Green Match Fund is our match funding campaign that focus, uh, focuses on environmental issues. So it, it is focused for it is it is for charities focused on working on environmental issues that is their core focus of their work um the campaign launches in line with world earth day so next year the campaign will launch on april 18th and it will end on april 20 uh, 25th um so this year's campaign was 
our biggest ever green match fund campaign um we had 178 charities taking part 4.3 million pounds was raised in total across the whole campaign and over 22,000 donations were taken across the whole campaign um yeah uh, you, charities can uh, go to our homepage and find out more about the green match fund and the full eligibility eligibility details if you click on um for charities there is a link to the uh, green match fund information page so i'm now going to pass you over to uh, beth who is going to explain how the application process works thanks ahil and um hi everyone um just to know i've got two screens at the moment so if you see my eyes going up and down that's the reason why um but yeah as sahil mentioned i'm going to be talking about how the match funding model for the green match fund works this year i'll try to go and be as clear and as detailed as possible but if you do have any questions please don't be afraid to put them in the q a box and we'll try to answer as many as we can at the end so as shown on the screen at the moment, you'll see some of the key terms that we'll be using. I just want to give an explainer of what these terms mean before we go into it. So you're all very clear on what I'm talking about. So firstly, when we think of a pledge, this is anyone in the charities network, for example, a trustee, a trust, foundation and so on, who commits match funds to support a charity in their campaign. So these pledges count as promises of funding that can be unlocked by a charity through online donations that they raise during the campaign week and these relationships are sourced and managed by the charity. When I reference champion this is for anyone who could be considered one of Big Giz partners so for example they could be high net worth individuals, philanthropists, companies and so on and these can be um, same with pledges these donations can be unlocked through um, any online donations that are raised during the campaign week and all of the champions are sourced and managed by Big Giz. And of course, I'm sure you're all familiar with online donations, but these are anything that's raised by individuals or the organiza or organizations um, during the campaign week. So anyone who wants to donate to your campaign, essentially, and these will unlock any of your match funds um, during the campaign. So moving on to the next stage now, for all of the applications, charities will be required to complete what is called a stage one application form. So essentially, you'll be asked to submit information on the project that you're seeking to raise funds for. So this is where we ask you about targets, aims and other charity details. So anyone who's taken part in a campaign before, you should be very familiar with how this application form works. But all of this can be found in your charity portal. And the deadline to submit this application is the 16th of January this year. So this is where the um, model gets slightly different, particularly if you've taken part in our Green Match Fund before, this will be very new to you. So the Green Match Fund follows what we call our multi-model of match funding. And essentially this means that during the stage one application process, charities will have the option to choose between either our one-one model or pledge model of match funding. And as you can see in this screenshot on the, um, on the slide, during this application phase, you'll be told what this the models are. You'll be able to choose the model that you want to do. So for charities that decide to choose the 1-1 one, one model, this is the green match fund and match funding in its simplest form. So this is for charities who are seeking to receive up to £10,000 in match funding from one of Big Gives champions. So this is where all of your funds, all of the online donations that you raised during that campaign week will be matched by one of Big Gives champions. So if you've taken part in Green Match Fund before, this is the model that is always usually run by. So I would particularly recommend this model for charities who are new to GMF, potentially are new to match funding in general. This is a great option to kind of get involved for the first time. I would also recommend it for those small to mid-sized mid charities who are looking to go for a slightly smaller target. The next stage, um, for, sorry, the next option is the pledge model. So this, um, if you've taken part in our Christmas challenge or you're about to take part in our Christmas challenge, you'll be very familiar with how this pledge model works. So this is where your match funding pot is made up of both pledges, which your charity secures, and match funding from a big 
give champion. So charities who are seeking to re receive up to £50,000 in match funding from a big give champion should go for this method. So I'd particularly recommend it for those bigger charities who are more experienced in fundraising or um, particularly have an annual income that's bigger. And um, this is a really great option for you if you're looking to go for a slightly bigger target. So the pledge deadline for this phase is February 2nd. And just to note here that if you've chosen the 1-1 one, one model, you'll completely bypass this stage. You do not need to collect any pledges. Um, the final thing I would also note here that is if you choose this model and then you're struggling to raise pledges, please do get in touch with us so we can liaise with you directly. So moving on to the next slide, here you'll see um, in the application phase at the top bar, there's something called targets. So this phase stage is the last time that you can change your match funding model. So if you decide you've got to targets, you're like, actually, I've chosen the one one model, but I want to go for pledge. I, you can go back and you will be able to switch it. If you've then gone past targets, you are locked into that model. So you won't be able to switch at that stage. So I definitely advise during this application phase to really consider your targets, think about what you want to go for and then make that decision. So once we've passed the pledge deadline, we'll get to the stage three, which is vetting and notification. So this is where Big Give review all of the applications and then we assign funding to each of the campaigns. So. Here you'll see the deadline for offers is the 14th of February. What I would say is that for anyone who's chosen the pledge model, I would definitely advise trying to get your application in as early as possible to allow for enough time for you to start collecting those pledges. So as you can see in the examples on each side, if you've chosen the 1-1 one, one model, you could receive up to £10,000 in match funding from one of our champions. So here as the example, the charity has gone for £10,000. For the pledge model, you can see on the side that charity is actually seeking to raise, wanting £40,000 from, um, from the match funding. So £20,000 of that is made up of pledges and £20,000 of that would be made up of champion funds. And a reminder here that you could receive up to £50,000 in champion funding if you want to. Um, Sorry, just one more thing I remember to note here is that the amount of champion funding that you receive if you choose the pledge tar if you choose the pledge model is um up to the same amount of pledges that you secured. So if you've scored 20,000 pledges, you can secure up to 20,000 pounds in champion funds. Moving on to that stage, we'll move on to then the marketing campaigns. So this is when you start to prep for your campaign. Of course, you have the campaign reek. So again, as an example on the 1-1 one, one model side, as they've got £10,000 in champion funding, they'd be seeking to raise £10,000 in online donations. So the total amount they would have raised is £20,000. On the pledge model side, the charity has £40,000 in match funding, so they're seeking to raise £40,000 in online donations, so that means the total that they would have raised from this campaign is £80,000. The final stage is the post-campaign phase. This is a bit where you don't have to worry about as much because all of the information will come to you at a much later stage. But one important thing to note here is that along with all of the other post-campaign actions, charities have chosen the pledge model will need to secure the payment of um, secure payment from their pledges. So you need to go out to your pledges, ask for payment, and they'll pay to pay them pledges to you directly. After that, you'll be required to upload proof of pledge, so proof that you've received the payment that we can see, and then your champion funding will be paid out. For charities who have chosen the one one model, of course, you haven't collected pledges, so you don't have to do this, and you'll just be given the date of when your champion funds will be paid. So hopefully I've broken that down in as much detail as possible, but as a reminder, please do pop any questions into the Q&A box and we'll aim to answer them all at the end. Thank you. Thanks, Beth. Um, I'm just going to briefly go over the impact of our campaigns um, uh, for any charities new to us. So uh, we base our impact on our post-campaign surveys that we send out to char participating charities um, just to understand how the chat uh, our campaigns have sort of affected their organizations um and what we break it down into is in um four key areas which is the resilience how the, how the campaign has affected the resilience of the charity this the skills for the charity and their profile as well as the overall satisfaction um i'm just going to go over these 
points in a bit more detail over the next uh, few slides. So resilience is about um, uh, improving the charity's sort of income streams. Uh, we know that um, grant making at the moment is very tough. It's very com more competitive than ever for charities, as well as just generally um, fundraising, getting funding from the government, etc. It's all uh, become really squeezed over the last uh, year or two. And we really think it's important for um charities to diversify their income stream so they're not relying on one channel only and match funding we think is a great opportunity for that um, because it what we have found is that match funding not only encourages people to donate encourages them to donate more so um, it can help help you um in your fundraising efforts obviously it's not the only part of your fundraising sort of it shouldn't be the only part of your fundraising um um suite you should also be doing other activities but we think match funding can be a component of that um match funding is a great way to just be engaging with supporters whether it's new new donors um uh, sorry, existing supporters, new supporters, or la what we call those lapsed donors. We we have found from charity feedback that the match funding has encouraged those types, uh, those lapsed donors to start supporting the charity again. On to the skills. Um, so we provide um, training for charities taking part in our campaigns. We host webinars, we have uh, guidebooks, we have case studies from previous um, previous participants. So um, the uh, the skill, the training that we offer, we hope that can go into just building the long a charity's long-term digital fundraising um, skills and improve it not only for the campaign you're taking part in but just generally for your whole fundraising um, uh, fundraising toolkit so from last year's Christmas challenge we found that 83 percent of charities reported back that um, the skills the training that we provided increased the uh, confidence in online fundraising by am um, which has which includes charities that are new to digital fundraising, but also charities that have um, previous experience in digital fundraising. So we try to cater to all types of audiences. Um, we know that our campaigns are a great opportunity for charities to try something new. Um, as mentioned, all of our free train, all of our training and resources are completely free for charities to access. And we also try and encourage collaboration with charities, uh, with other charities. So we try and host peer-to-peer -peer learning webinars. We, we're tr um, piloting a mentorship scheme for this year's Christmas challenge. So we're excited to see how that goes, where we partnered um, experienced charities with um, sort of charities new to our campaigns or new to digital fundraising. So we're really looking forward to seeing the results of how that scheme has worked. So we're really trying to encourage as much um, cross-pollination between charities as possible, as well as providing our own training. Um, this is some of the feedback that we have received previously on the training that we provided. Um, and we will make this slide available, these slides available um, after the webinar. Um, and finally, the um, profile of the charity um, charities has increased through our campaigns. Um, we know that, for example, um, fundraising around World Earth Day, there's a lot of activity within the environmental sector for fundraising around World Earth Day. And we feel that coming together under one umbrella campaign can really help raise the profile of both the cause, but also individual charities by saying they're taking part in the Green Match Fund. Um, we market the, as the big give, we market the campaign as a whole. Um, we try and get it in front of the media, on social media as well. Um, and we have a donor base of about 100,000 donors who we reach out to to encourage them to donate during the campaign. Um, we find that the match funding campaigns are a great way for charities have said that it's a great way that they managed to build sort of excitement internally with it across their different teams about taking part in the campaign and bringing parts together diff bringing together different parts of the organization and that even includes trustees that we've noted from charities they've said that it's been like taking part in our campaigns has been the first time that the trustees have engaged with a, a fundraising campaign that they've uh, been taking part in. And it's just something to shout about. It's um, both obviously before the campaign, announcing that you've been awarded match funding, the build up to the campaign. Obviously during the campaign week, you're going to be having a lot of um, 
communications going out to your supporters and then finally after the campaign has ended it's really you can really shout about how much you've raised and what the impact of all that support is going towards so finally how to get involved in the green uh, match fund so the applications are already open. So um, to apply, visit the biggive.org. Uh, Sorry, visit biggive.org. Um, you can create your account, or if you already have an account with us, log in, click on Big Give Campaigns, and then click on Apply Now for um, Green Match Fund 2024. Um, if you're unsure, if you already have an account with us, send us an email we, uh, alongside your charity number and we can check for you and um, give you access to your account if you already have one registered with us. Um, but that sums up the Green Match Fund for next year and crucially how the application process works. So um, we can now open it up to questions. So I will just um, stop sharing. Start with the ones on in the Q&A box. So yeah. firstly, just Michael asked, can we get a copy of this presentation? Of course, I will be putting it in the charity portal after the session, along with the link to the YouTube recording. So you'll find that by logging into the portal, going to support, and there's GMF resources there. So I'll be uploading that um, after this. Um, one question from Emily here, she says, if we submit our initial application before the 16th of January deadline, will we be able to begin collecting pledges straight away or does the pledge collection begin only after January 16th? Um, yeah, so yeah, you can start collecting your pledges straight away if you've gone for the pledge model as soon as you submit your applications. And that's why we encourage charities thinking about using the pledge model to submit the application as soon as possible so you have more time to collect the pledges um so yeah that's the advantage of submitting early you just get more time to secure the pledges and you're automatically enrolled in that stage um what is the likelihood of getting champion funds if you go for the pledge model but then don't receive champions champion funds can you go back to pledges and top it up um yes uh so um we because we're using this new model so we're actually not 100 percent sure about how competitive it is going to be this year but it, there's definitely the possibility if you secure pledges we will and you're not awarded champion funds we will give you the uh, opportunity to take part in the campaign using your pledges and you can add in more pledges if you want so that that will be a possibility and just to say uh, um this can normally happen more with our christmas challenge because it's such is such a big campaign but less likely for our green match fund um but yeah uh beth here's a question for you you say on the pledge model there's forty thousand pounds of donations twenty thousand pounds of pledges and twenty thousand pounds of champion funds which comes together and makes up eighty thousand pounds in total raise but that's only if you manage the four, uh, manage to raise the forty thousand pounds in online donations. If you don't get to that forty thousand um, pounds, what happens? Right. Okay. So yeah, it's not an all or nothing situation. So whatever you raise in online donations will be matched by your available match funding pot. For the pledge model, your pledge funds are used to match online donations first before your champion funding is accessed. So this is why I advise the pledge model more for charities who are more experienced in fundraising, used to having those bigger targets um, compared to the one one model where all your donations are matched by your champion funder. Um, I'm just going to, I see Emily has raised her hand, so I'm just going to let Emily um, speak um, just to break it up a little. Hi, Emily. Should be able to unmute if you want to ask us a question. Hi, sorry. <clears throat> I've just been waving for about 10 minutes to ask if you <laughs> have uh, make the slides a little bit bigger, but um, Beth just responded oh. in the chat, so thank you. I didn't realise my hand was still up. Sorry. Oh, sorry. No problem. Thank you. Um, uh, so Susanna's asked what's the difference between donations and pledges aren't all donations matched in the pledge model I will share the screen and Beth you can maybe um, explain it again um, in case um, people um, people haven't quite understood we understand it is a bit of a complex model the pledge model so yes yeah so as here, um, pledges are anyone in a charity's network. So it could be an individual, it could be a volunteer. 
but anyone who commits match funds to support a charity in their campaign. So these pledges count as promises of funding that make up part of your match funding pot. So if you've chosen the one one model, this is not relevant to you. This is only relevant if you choose the pledge model. When I talk about online donations, this is any donations that you receive to your campaigns. So it could be an individual organization making that donation. But these online donations happen during the campaign week and they are then unlocked by your available match funding pot. So for the pledge model, your available match funding pot is both pledges and champion funds. Hopefully that helps. Great. We have a question. Do you accept applications from umbrella organized uh, organization raising funds on behalf of members where umbrella organizations disperses funding to members for them to implement projects? Um, yes, we would consider uh, as long as you're a registered charity. Yes, that is um, something that we would consider. And I guess it will be good to understand if a first of all, the umbrella organization is a registered charity, but also if it's sort of in the charitable objects that um, their work, their work or the funding that they award to is focused on environmental issues. So that has to be the key that it's a, a registered charity and B that the the charitable objects mention environment or some sort of derivative of environment, such as conservation, for example, in the charitable objects. Yeah, I'm just typing away. Um, so there's a few questions about the projects and activities that we're looking for to fund. So I'm just going to put in the chat now the link to our green match fund page if you have any specific questions about the project so you're not sure if you're eligible for this or anything like that I would advise going to that page and having a look because there's all of the eligibility details there and then if you have any follow-up questions from that please email us at hello at biggive.org and we can discuss with you directly about whether we think that your specific project or charity is eligible so we had a question what is specific about the green match fund is it that it's only for environmental orgs or is there more such as specific champions and advertising um yeah so the green match fund it is specifically for environmentally focused char charities focused on environmental issues where it's listed in the charitable objects so that could be obviously be climate change conservation um sort of in that area um uh, um and yeah and uh all of we work with the environmental funders network uh for the campaign so they're one of the key partners for the campaign and they help us assess applications and decide which charities sort of are awarded champion funding um and then yeah the marketing we do which can beth can explain is very much focused on yeah promoting the environment and it's all themed around like obviously the environment which is the core focus of the campaign i don't know beth if you want to talk a bit about the marketing that we do um probably don't want to confuse yeah. two people too much because that's yeah. quite far down yeah. the line but we do lots of pr around it we have like a campaign video we have celebrities that try and get involved particularly if they're related to like the charities that are taking part as well so we do like a big range of just general raising awareness marketing to really boost the profile of the campaign uh we have a question i just want to pick up um how do people someone's asking if they go for the pledge model how do people make these pledges and how does this differ from donations and what happens if people um pledge but don't follow up um with paying paying their pledge um yeah so firstly pledges just think of basically pledges are match funds but they're match funds coming from your from your network so they're coming from like a business and major donor a trust and foundation um and the way that someone submits a pledge is if you go through the pledge model once you've submitted your stage one application you will then have access to the pledge form and you need to share that digital form with your prospective pledges it's a very short form which just says who they are and how much they're pledging to your campaign as match funds in the event that a pledger cannot pay their um, pledge we would ask you to contact us as soon as possible um in it is most likely the case that we uh, you would need to secure a replacement pledger um to pay that pledge um we can only 
authorize the release of the champion funds, so the match funds coming from the big give side, once we have seen the pledges have been paid in full. Great. Uh, um, a few more questions in the chat. So firstly from Charlie, we're expecting a 20K donation at the start of 2024. We're a small charity, three employees, total income of 100K per year. I'm wondering if we could or should try the pledge model. Any advice, Sahil? Um, yeah, I think it'd be good to understand what's your digital fundraising experience. Uh, I would, I, it's probably a good point, a good thing to rem, um, say as well. Charities cannot apply for champion funding, which is more than 10% of your income. So the max in for in Charlie's case, they're 100, their income is £100,000 a year. So they cannot be awarded champion funding, which is more than £10,000. As such, for in Charlie's case, we would probably encourage you to go for the one-to-one -one model. That makes the most sense. It sounds like you're a small charity. You said you're a small charity. You have limited capacity. Um, and that model is easier for you to sort of get the understanding of how the campaign works. Great. Um, from Jasmine, can pledges be sponsors? I've previously delivered utilising trust donations, but changed organisations and now have a stronger portfolio of corporate partners and sponsors. Um, which, Jasmine, would you be able to email us hello at biggive.org? I think we'll need some more details to truly understand how um, that's um sponsorship works but yeah if you can email us hello at biggive.org we can get back to you um we do have a question from trisha who i'm going to allow to talk hi trisha oh hi hi sorry hi. I, I was late uh, seven minutes late uh, into yeah. the uh, webinar my question is we can only go for one-to-one -one model uh, my question is uh, some of our larger donors they do send the money to our charity bank account they don't pay they're quite old very vulnerable they don't want to use the online uh, transfer so in that case can we then pay that money from the charity account into the portal that's a good question firstly um that is it's one of the key rules of the campaign. Charities cannot donate to their own own campaign just because we don't know the actual source of those donations. And so we we can't say if it's char charity repurposing funds or if it's legitimate donation. So we just have a blanket rule that charities cannot donate to their own, own campaign. Um, our, all of our campaigns are digital fundraising campaigns. So that's really encouraging charities to build out their digital fundraising capabilities. So all of the donations have to be made online. Um, we have for donations of £500 or more, we have a BAX donation option that donors can choose to use. Um, so if you have major donors that want to donate five hundred pounds or more, they can use that backs donation option, and we send um we can we'll send information about how that works to participating charities. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. No did you sorry, did you say over five hundred pounds? Yeah, five hundred pounds or more. That oh. then donors can choose to use a backs option. All right, thank you very much. Thanks. No problem. Amazing. Um, I have a question from Joy. Does matching have to come from individuals or can it come from public sector bodies? So um, essentially, I think that's relating to pledges. So your pledges can be anyone. It could be an individual or an organization. Um, so that's absolutely fine if it does come from public sector. Um, and also just a question on like when we find out about the champion funding. So the offer deadline is the 14th of February. Again, linked in that um website link I sent in the chat and um, all of the key dates are there as well if you need them um there's a question from Emma if you apply for the one-to-one -one model are you guaranteed to have your donations match or does it rely on champions choosing your charity um yes if you go for the one-to-one -one model firstly you will then at the review stage you will find out if you've been awarded champion funding um you can only take in the one-to-one -one model, you can only take part in the campaign if you've been awarded champion funding. Um, and then, yeah, all donations up to the amount of champion funding you have been awarded will be matched. Um, yeah. So I don't know if we've done any data analysis, but did you know that like, the percentage of champion funding generally applied for those applications? Yeah, it. I think it was a 
around 80% this year. Um, uh, I think, um, like I said, um, that was for this year and we've changed the model for next year. So to be honest, I'm not sure how that will change, whether it's going to become more competitive or less competitive, but that's just a rough indicator of what it was for the Green Match Fund this year. And also to encourage charities, we are aiming to secure more match funding than we had last year as well. So whilst there might be more charities applying, there should also be more match funds available. The pledge model, would champion funding be the same as ple pledge funding made or might they give more? So the maximum you can be awarded under the pledge model is equal to the amount of pledges you've secured. You cannot have more champion funding than pledge pledges you've secured. Um, and then, so for the one-to-one -one model, can you now apply for any amount up to £10,000? Um, that's a good question. So for the one-to-one -one model, we will award champion funding um, at one of three levels. So either 2,500, 5,000 or 10,000 pounds. Uh... So the question of Charlie, does anyone who gets donations gets champion funding? So before the campaign starts in April, um, you will know the amount of match funding allocated to your campaign. So this is the same for one one and the same for pledge. You'll know before the campaign starts how much you're seeking to raise in online donations um, and how much match funding you have that will unlock that. So when you're raising those online donations during the campaign week, you know what your target is and anything you raise then will be matched by that available pot. Um, someone's got a good question. They've said, so the charity uh, has to have in its of so they're asking if the charity has to have um the environment mentioned in this charitable objects despite the fact that charity for example just wants to uh, generate solar power so we take a holistic view of that so it it's either environment itself or terms related to to um the environment so if for example, environment isn't mentioned in your charitable objects but it ref it references something about um, generating solar energy then obviously we would that would still be eligible for the um for the campaign but we just say environment as a catch-all term but we obviously do decide for that um charities may be more specific in their charitable objects and we we do consider that um so i think this one about is about certain sectors being mm oversubscribed for GMF. Um, I don't know mm -hmm. if you know more about that, Sahil. Yes, uh, I think definitely areas like um, conservation and just uh, general climate change are oversubscribed. Um, I, um, we are trying to encourage more, more applications, probably in sort of the um, Cinderella causes like um, working um, with with the legal sector about changing laws or um, related to specifically about toxic and pollutants. And there was one other Cinderella cause, which I have forgotten. But there are some causes which we would really encourage um, applications for. If you can contact, if you email us, we can give you further details on the specific cause areas. Um, but yeah, there are sometimes some sectors which have more demand for funding and we want to try and spread the funding we give out across different types of environmental causes. So it's not all focused on climate change or conservation, for example. Uh, Beth, that's a great question. Uh, if you don't re reach your target in the one to mod model, will you still receive the match for what you have raised? Yes, in short answer, you'll mm -hmm. receive whatever you've raised plus that amount matched. And Sons asks, with the one-to-one -one model, are you saying you can't top up any shortfalls in charity champion money? So, for example, if you request £10,000 but only get awarded £5,000, can this be topped up by a pledger at a later stage as you did with this year's Big Give? I think that is something that we would consider, Amanda, that if you've gone for the one-to-one -one model and then you've been awarded champion funding and then you want to add in pledges, that's something that we will maybe consider after the um, 
after after the champion funds have been awarded. So please do get in touch with us at that stage. Um, uh, question here. Are champions encouraged to support pledge model over one one or do they choose based on the project? Um, so it depends on the champion. Uh, it's basically some champion It's according to their preference. Um, we have one champion, for example, they really prefer funding charities under the pledge model just because um, it leverages their funding a bit more and in, the charities have more sort of stick in the game uh, to raise as much as possible. But there are other champions that are just really happy to do the one-to-one -one model. So we really work with the champions according to what they want to fund rather than trying to push them in a certain direction. Um, sorry, someone's just asked, what is a Cinderella cause? If you get in touch with us, um, we can explain that a bit further. But essentially, there are some cause areas within the environmental sector which are underfunded. Um, and we can provide you with um, some details about what those particular cause areas are. Um, it's a question from Sophie. If we secure pledges of e.g. 20,000 and we don't collect the full 20,000 in the week of fundraising, do we lose out on the remainder of the pledge funds? I, I think firstly to clarify here is that if you secure 20,000 pounds in pledges, you may be awarded 20,000 pounds in champion funds. So your campaign target will be 40,000. Your online donation target, sorry, will be 40,000. Um, but yeah. Bex, you want... So if you raised less... Um, so just to actually go there back, we go. pledges are used first before your champion funding is accessed. So that means any donations that you receive up to 20,000 will be matched by your pledges. And then the remaining 20,000 that you raise in online donations will be matched by your champion funds. So if you raised say 10,000, that means you'd only access 10,000 pounds of your pledges. And um, so that's the only, that's the amount your pledges would be required to pay you. Is then up to you if you'd like to go out to your pledges to say, you know, we haven't raised enough online donations, but if you still like to donate the full amount, you can. And then it'd be the pledges decision if they'd want to do that. And um, so it's not, it's a case that a lot of the time we see, particularly with our Christmas challenge, the pledger pays a full amount regardless. So it's likely that you wouldn't lose that on all of that funding. But it's important to note that they're only required to pay you what you've successfully um, raised in online donations and you wouldn't access the champion funding in this example. Um, so I'd really encourage you particularly to have really um, just to think about your targets. If you think you're going to struggle to reach, raise those really big amounts, I would definitely encourage you to go down the one one route. Um, and em Emily's asked if we get assigned champion funding, would be able to contact them to thank them, etc. Um, yeah, it depends on the champion. Um, some champions are really happy to be contacted directly by charities. In case, in that case, we will share their co contact details with you. Some prefer more hands off approach and want all messages to come come through us. In which case, we'll let you know. Um, and someone's finally asked what happens if a pledger doesn't pay um, yes if a pledger doesn't pay um, please get in touch with us as soon as possible um, it will probably be a case that um, you will need to secure a replacement pledger to pay that missing amount and we can only um, authorize payment of the champion funds to you once we've seen all the pledges have been paid um, question from Frankie. Can a charity, not our own, donate during the online campaign? Yes, they can. That's absolutely fine. Essentially, we only don't allow donations from the charity itself um, just because we can't measure that on like, the diligence terms and things like that. But other charities donating to you, absolutely fine. Um, I also saw a question here that came in from Glenn. Can donations be raised through other platforms like GoFundMe? Um, so no, all of your donations for the Green Match Fund must be made through Big Give. You'll receive your own campaign page with donate link on Big Give where you can direct all of your donations through. But we can only match donations made during um, our during our campaign on our platform. And someone's just asked about our fees. Yes, I've just put that. Oh, sorry, just bear with me. I'll put that in the channel again. Um so yeah, so there's no fees for having an account with us, applying or taking part in our campaign. The only fees that you incur are there are card processing fees on the online donations that come through the website during the campaign week. 
Um, so I put the link to our fees page um, in the chat. Um, so that's all the fees that you will have um, on the donations only. Um, there are no other fees. Um, so with the one-to-one -one model, you say um, charities can only apply for a maximum of champion funds, which is 10% of the annual income. So this example Robert has given the charity has an annual income of £30,000. So under the one-to-one -one model, the maximum champion funding you can be awarded is £2,500. Great. Um, a question coming from Louise in the chat. Um, sorry, I was late to the webinar. Are the pledges from individuals and corporates and the champion provided by a big give? Um, sorry, I'm slightly confused on that question I, but i think if it's about what are what can pledges and champions be um pledges can be anyone in your charity networks that could be individual or organizations and champions are managed and relationships are sourced by big give but they could also be high net with individuals or organizations it just depends on who's joining us for that campaign if that didn't ask your question please do send a little follow-up um yeah and then I think Susan just wanted to clarify if the card donation fees are paid by donors or the charity. So the card processing fees, which I've linked to in the chat, are taken off the donation, um, just to be clear. So uh, just to clarify, um, the big give is a, we're a charity ourselves um, and the way we generate revenue or help cover our um Operating costs is that we ask uh, donors to leave an optional tip to the big give on top of their donation with them when they're making a when they're making a donation. Um, we like to just remind donors that we are a charity, and anything in excess of our operating costs and reserves goes back into providing match funds for charities. Um, so we do have we do offer match funds from our own pot of money from the from big gives own pot of money to charities as well as our other champions. Um, uh, great question from David. If we are running a large project, say needing to raise 200k, could we use the one one model to raise 20k towards the overall amount um, and have funding from elsewhere? That is absolutely fine. One of the questions in the application form is actually um, if you're raising funds as part of a bigger project, please explain more in more detail so in that question you could actually explain more about that overall project that you're running and make it clear that this is like con a contribution to that project so that's absolutely fine uh, there's a question from michael can you be clear that it's more cost effective cost effective for us to uh to gather gift aid ourselves rather than you collecting it um that depends on your organization uh, in the on the fees page which i linked to um we do say that charities can authorize us to claim gift aid for them, in which case there's a 3% admin fee on any gift aid applicable. Um, and it depends on your organization. Some charities already have their own gift aid processes set up and it makes more sense for them to claim it themselves. And in which case they don't authorize us and there's no admin fee on any gift aid. But some charities, especially smaller smaller ones, want us to claim gift aid for them. Um, so it just depends on your organization. And that's something I can't really answer um, for you. Um. So, okay. if someone, sorry. oh, sorry, go ahead, sorry. <laughs> If someone donates fifty pounds, how much will be taken via card fees and any other funds taken out? Um, please, can we have an example to explain, explain, understand how much we receive in the pot? Um, so my maths at the top of my head is quite patchy, but if you have a fifty pound donation, um. I'm just bringing up the fees page on my side. So on a £50 donation, um, and let's, for example, keep it easy, it's made from the uh, UK. There is a 1.5% um, card processing fee on that £50 plus 20p. And on the fees itself, there's a VAT, which we legally have to charge. And that's on the fees, not the donations. It's on that one5 percent plus 20p which there's VAT applied to that amount um if you can contact us we can provide more detailed breakdown when when I have a calculator in front of me and I can sort of explain it break it down but um yeah that's how the fees work 
Thank you. Um, Roman said, would a community engaged food preparation and distribution project for people in need be recognised as an environmental project? Yes. Um, so we have had charities working in a similar area taking part. I guess the key question, key thing has to be that it's reducing food waste. So you're sort of taking excess food waste and then redistributing it. And if that's the case, that's absolutely eligible um, for funding. And we have funded projects like that in the past in the Green Match Fund. Um, I'm seeking match funding for a national heritage national lottery heritage fund would this be eligible um i think we need some further details because i'm not quite sure exactly what that um entails so maybe karen if you can email us um then we can sort of provide a better answer about whether that would be eligible for the green match fund or not i think i don't know if there are any other questions um in the chat or anything i can't see any other questions yeah i think we ran through most of them um but yeah just a reminder this webinar has been recorded so i'll be uploading it to youtube this afternoon so you can see it and send it to your colleagues and things like that we'll also be um sharing the um webinar presentation slides in the portal so you'll also have access to that if you want to review all of the dates and the key information again um, but otherwise, if there are any specific projects about your eligibility, about what model might be best for you, please just email us and we'd be happy to have a bit more of an in-detailed um, chat with you. But yeah. Um, so there's a quick question here about some from Robert. It says, gift aid, how do we claim it if it's online donation? Um, yeah, all donations are eligible for gift aid. We ask donors if their donation is gift aid eligible. Um, if you're claiming it yourselves in your donation report, there is all the informa donor information for charities to submit their own gift aid claims. But every type of donation is gift aid eligible if um, and we ask that to donors. Thank you, everyone. I um, hope you all have a re lovely rest of the week. Bye.